Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Today I'm going to share with you the second card I created using the Fox Patina technique with fresco paints, crunch paste and infusions. Last week you saw the basic technique on a regular card and with four color of fresco paints. This week the technique is the same but I'll create two other color combinations and a project that is more fun to make. This second card is interactive, it has a flipping bird. In part 3, I'll create what can be the base of a rusty mini lantern. In all of them, I'll be using one of my two stamp sets released on February 2020, ESC 20. Ok, let's get started with part 2. As in part 1, I start by cutting my pieces of paper. This is an A4 paper and I've cut it in fours. Then I'm going to stamp the bird in the middle, exactly in the middle. This is very important because, well, I'll be stamping two card fronts and they will be facing, so the circle needs to be exactly in the middle. So I've calculated it very well, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm stamping two and then I'm stamping a mask. And once I have all that, I'm going to cut out the mask and I'll place it on top of one of them, ready to get painted. And now I'm going to create the flipping bird, the side B, let's say. So the mirror side. So I'm just using a jelly plate and then I'm inking my stamp and I'm placing the jelly plate carefully on top, just rubbing my fingers very carefully so the ink transferred to the jelly plate. And then I'm stamping that on top of a card. And that's my bird looking at the other side. Now let's work on the first background. This is my color combination. Ochre, weather copper, deep sea and globe thistle. First I'm going to spread some grunge paste on top of a piece of a scrap paper of smoothie by Paper Artsy. And now I'm going to use my first color with a brush, ochre, and then I'm going to just put it on the background very lightly and leaving some gaps in white. This is important because I want some parts of the card to be exposed so then when I apply the infusions at the end they really get into the paper. And you will see what I mean at the very end. Well, this is the same technique that I did before in the part one. Now I'm going to use weather copper and I'm going to apply it on the other piece of paper, the one that I has um, the grunge paste. So I'm using that piece of paper as if it was a brush. And I'm lightly touching at the very beginning because, well, there's a lot of paint and I don't want to transfer a very big um, mark of paint at once. So just want light touches but then when the paint is a bit dry then I'm really pushing hard for both the paint to transfer and the grunge paste to transfer now third color deep sea so again a little bit there and very light at the beginning and then I will press harder and harder until I run out of paint and I normally clean my brush on the piece of um, cardstock that has this uh, grunge paste before I move on to the next color so I'm just cleaning in that there and then I press a little bit more and then I move to the next color glow thistle so that's the fourth color I'm shaking it well and then spreading it through and as you can see the piece changes a lot just by applying one color after the other and you could end it here, but I think that the nicest part of this, well, one of the nice parts of this technique is adding some sort of metallic on top. And my metallic that I always go to is gold. So that will be the next and final color of fresco paint. So shake it and put it there just a little bit. And when I was applying it, I thought, okay, that's too little. <laughs> so I'm going to apply a bit more. And this time, because my brush was wet with the other paint and I didn't want more, I just applied it with a, oh, well, with a palette knife. And that's it, that touch of gold. And then it will come the final step that will shift completely my tag and will make it very rusty and very vintage. You may not like it because you may like these vibrant colors, but at my end, I really need this vintage look <laughs> because otherwise, I don't know, it's not a project of mine, if you want to say it that way. So I spritz water on top of the infusions that I just put on top of the card. And as you can see, everything becomes yellow and wet. 
and full of infusions. The walnut crystals stay there, which are the black, well, brown dots that you see there that are not dissolved. And the rest of the infusions, well, give me that uh, yellow look because I'm using golden sands, which is a yellow color. We are going for a grungy effect, so I'm picking some infusions from the craft sheet directly onto my paper. And once I'm fine with this, I'm going to heat set that. And the paper is completely curved, but when you apply it some heat, then it becomes flat again. Now I'm mixing some more infusions with water and I'm using that combination to watercolor the frame and the bird. The bird is going to be cut, so, but at this point I wasn't sure yet if I wanted this one to be flipping bird or not, so I was just painting also the background a little bit until I actually decide which card I keep for part one, which you have already seen, so it was not this one, or for this part two. So originally I did like um, three cards similar, the one that you saw last week and then this one from this week and, and the second one that you'll see today. And from there I choose which one belonged to which project. That first background is done and I move into the second one. Again I'm preparing a scrap piece of paper with some grudge paste. And now I'm going to apply the first color directly on my background. It's going to be turquoise, the darkest one. If I had different colors, I mean fresco paints are, some of them are opaque, some of them are semi-opaque and some of them are translucent. So if in my color palette I choose a translucent between the four, that one would be the first one that I would apply on top of my craft sheet, I mean on top of my paper. And this is because translucent colors, well, they don't cover fully a dark surface. They just, well, are translucent so you can see through and it's better that they become the first paint that you paint on top of a white surface so you see the true color. After the first color is applied I'm applying the second one which was Ni Niagara Falls. This is one of the colors by Sadapter, the new ones I believe and it's lovely. I like it very much. So again very lightly at the beginning and then when I run out of paint I push hard so then some of that crunch paint gets, gets transferred to my paper. And you can see those whites coming there. That's the grunge paste. And sometimes even that's a piece of paper, <laughs> which gives a bit more texture to the whole thing. Now, Blue by You. Again, I think this is a Seth Apter one. Very cool, and they work lovely together. I mean, this color combination is beautiful already. So, a light touch. And then press hard and hard to transfer the remaining of the paint as well as some of that grunge paste to give more texture. And the final color is going to be lichen. That's a very light green. Love it. Very, very nice. And that suddenly gives a lot of brightness into my tag. So it's not that dark. It's a bit lighter in tone. And I really, really like this color combination, like green color and greens, I mean, and blues. Very nice. And once I'm done, then I'm going to add the metallic touch. Just a final bit of licking. <laughs> and now the gold comes into play. And I'm going to be careful on putting it very lightly as well. Just briefly touching on top. And everywhere. So that gives me the uh, feeling that this was like a piece of metal that has been weathered somehow and that it's a bit more, well, rusty. Not now, rusty, no, but when we apply infusion, so yeah, it's gonna change. I really like this color combination, so I was a bit sad of actually putting some infusions on top, but then, oh my gosh, <laughs> I really love when the yellow comes into play and adds those green tones on top and brown tones on top. So from the two color combinations, let me know in the comments which one you like the best. For me, well, this one, <laughs> because the other colors are too bright one for me, but well. So I'm adding now that um, yellow to watercolor the frame because we're going to keep that frame. And again, I wasn't sure if this would be like the flipping bird card or just the background card. So I also painted a little bit that uh, bird. 
and once that's there I just hit set everything add few more touches of that golden sands more controlled way with the brush directly instead of spritzing water adding some sort of shadows there and my second background will be kind of done in no time this is a very quick technique I really like it and you just change the color and you can see different parts so you can see here the three cuts that I created and I decide to work on those two the one on the right very right is last week's basically so now I'm cutting uh, the bird out so I'm leaving the frame and I'm going to do to add some vintage photo distress on the edges so they are not white and now I'm going to just work on the bird so I cut the bird and then that's the um, yeah that's the bird that is looking the other way so I cut it and then I'm edging it I put some double-sided tape that goes from the top to the bottom because I'll put some uh, thread that is a plastic thread that is transparent so you will not be able to see it very much it will be just making that the bird hangs from there so after that's there I'm going to put a bit more of that double-sided tape top and bottom and in both sides of that um, little frame that I cut even thinner than the actual stamped image on the background so it's a thinner um, ring and I'm putting four pieces of that double-sided tape so top and bottom and back and front and once all those that tape is over there I peel it and then I'm going to mount that bird so I just lay that on top of my craft sheet and I remove that thing from the bird as well and that's the thread which is transparent and I'm putting that there so my bird is hanging right now and I'm checking where to place it so I see that the tail basically needs to touch as down as I can so I have room for the beak and the wing to flip so I'm going to press that down I'm more interested in the downside than the top side you'll see that the top side doesn't hang very well but that's okay I'll fix that the important bit is the bottom so now I'm going to just thread that and giving some round around the ring so I make sure that the thread stays with that glue it's a bit messy because my fingers are completely <laughs> dirty and I'm leaving paint all over the place but that's fine because that will be hidden it's just to get structure and then the bottom part I'm doing the same I'm just rolling that um, piece of thread around the ring so I'm not doing any knots it's just well it's sticking there with the glue and then I'm just checking how it goes if it flips or right or not and I think it does so that's okay and then I'm going to cut that one and well stick it behind you see that they match right now but my camera went down and you can't see how I stick it but it's there so I stick both pieces together now I'm using some multimedia matte by Ranger I just want that piece to really stick there I could have used double-sided tape but this will make it more permanent I believe <laughs> and then I'm going to just apply a bit more on the back but you'll see that well I changed my idea I don't want to stick them straight away together I want to stick some paper in between so I have a frame so I'm going to create my frame using a piece of smoothie heavy cardstock I'm just cutting it there leaving some gap on the left and on the bottom double the gap that I want basically and then now I'm checking that they match they do so then I'm going to just paint the frame I well I draw the circle and I'm going to cut a very big circle so I know that this is hidden and then I'm going to add some ground espresso distress on all the edges so back and front of that piece so I'll be able to see that from both sides so I'm adding more brown and then I flip and I work on the other side as well 
So it's going to be a card that actually will have no room for sentiment. <laughs> I mean, you could stencil something in the back or in the front if you wanted, but I decided to just leave it that way. So it's just to show you that you can create a flipping bird with this stamp set, which is very cool. So I'm gluing that there. And then I'm going to stick that on top. And the card is done. So now you turn and turn and turn your bird. Once you let it go, it will flip. Ta-da! <laughs> and I'm showing you the other side and a repetition of the flipping. There you go. <laughs> I hope you liked the project. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Here are some close-up pictures so you can see all the detail of that rusty patina effect that we've created. Remember, there was a previous part, uh, part one, so you can see all the color combination. And there will come the part three. So if you don't want to miss it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the ring bell button so you don't miss the next video coming and many more that will come, of course. Also, feel free to leave me a comment. I love to read them all and you really made my day when you do so. Nothing else from me. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!